welcome everybody to episode 187 of the China Show. For those of you who celebrated Thanksgiving yesterday, I hope you had a wonderful day. Yeah, and I know that none of you are here because of all the Black Friday sales. Trying to get that 40-inch TV. Everyone's scrambling over each other to... Trying to get that Tickle Me Elmo. Mm -hmm. What else are they trying to get right now? No idea. Trying to get Tamagotchis. Any, you know. Anything that's on sale, but I'm pretty sure you could buy everything online, so just don't go this to the store. Is, this is also true, but <laughs> I feel like there is some element to the rush. I feel like people get off on that rush. Yeah, it's that like crush. grab hags, you know? They're like, ah, you know, <laughs> trying to get everything. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I we, have a, we have a show for you today, yeah. as usual. So let's saunter right into it with uh, what's new. You have to excuse my voice. I overdid it a bit last night. Anyway, so, <laughs> yeah. What's new is where we talk about everything that's new, specifically with regards to China. And um, I thought we were going to talk about a different country. Well, sometimes. you Because you talked about uh, South Africa on your channel. Yeah. So it's a, it was a little bit of a change. But we will talk about China today. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. If you want to know about why South Africans are stealing traffic lights, yes. you go over to the Serpent's Day channel. Later, though. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, we all know about degoyo or mm -hmm. gutter oil and why it's a huge problem in China. But just to reiterate again, this doesn't go away. Um, well, explain what gutter oil is, just in case people okay. are new. Gutter oil is when um, old oil and grease is basically fished out of the mm. sewers, out of the gutters and the sewers in China, and then processed and reused. Mm. Now... Um, at least the gutter oil, I mean, it's disgusting. It gets taken to a place where it gets kind of refined, but it's these backyard refineries where they throw in animal fats and all sorts of weird old, like, rotting stuff. It's not good. It's not like they take it to a nice clean lab and do it, okay? All right? <laughs> oh, I thought, because that's how I thought it was done. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you, sure. I, would, I would accept that. You would. Yeah, well, I guess yeah. if you think about it, if you disinfected it properly, I think the problem is it does. Even if you properly filter it, it still has more carcinogens yes, because it it's been combusted. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, and then they basically make it look like new. They put it into a new container or a yeah. used one, yeah. seal it up so it looks new, and then they sell it back to shops. Yes. But very often little shops like this guy who's running his little uh, you know, street food stall. Yeah. He just reuses his own oil that's in the gutter. So he's just taking it out there, collecting it so he can use it. Um, sure. And the problem with the way he's doing it is he's not refining it. Look, he's just literally taking it out of the gutter, putting it into a container so that he can use it in his cooking once again. Ah, but don't you know? This is how you make things taste really nice and special. Yeah, gives in it fact, a special flavor. I'm not even joking. There are people that will claim, hey, yeah. you know, it's horrible. It's bad. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. It's probably one of the grossest things in modern civilization in terms of sure. food items. Yeah. It's corrupt. It's sick. Mm. Some people are like, hey, that's what gives it that taste. Yeah, that, I know. That Chinese know. street food, that's what gives it that flavor. Yeah, some people are like, well, you know, you just need the degoyo, other, otherwise do it, it just doesn't taste the same. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I know people like that too. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. Anyway. It's very seasoned. <laughs> very seasoned. Yeah, it's seasoned. Um, let's move on to another little clip here of a clinic. And as you can see, there's a woman tries to open the door and... Oh, yeah. Fun, I like how the sensor makes it look so much worse. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. The, it just bonked, bonked her on she the head. She just got bonked. But it's some classic Chabudoa <laughs> well, glass build quality. If, if you're opening a door to go into a clinic and the door just shatters and com comes apart, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's never good. Tofu drag glass. Yes, yeah, you, you can get ambushed by this kind of thing in China occasionally. Yes. You know, yes. it just happens. That's so. true. That's true. It's just another example of it. Uh, this this poor nurse really kind of took it on the head, didn't she? We need the actual sound by Genesis. Of you need that? that? I yeah. guess we could do that. Got to follow it up, though. Yeah, anyway. Got to have both. Yeah, we have both. Yeah, there's uh, Baca mm -hmm. says at least she's already in the clinic. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, poor nurse. Um, yeah. And the person who opened the door looked looked very shocked too. Yes, yeah. she was absolutely yeah. shocked. Now uh, here's an important clip uh, that we absolutely need to show. Mm. I did include this in a video a week or so ago, but oh, um, okay. 
This is super important. What you have is you have a fire, as you can see here. Mm. Um, you have a, the fire truck is down there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously there to try and fight the blaze. Yes. But there's a policewoman with a megaphone. Okay. And there's obviously a crowd of onlookers here. Sure. I don't know if they work in that factory or whatever the case, but, uh -huh. uh, you know. But what is, what is her priority? I'll get us out of here. Let's see what she has to say. Yeah, so hmm. her priority is not like, oh, let's save people or put out the fire. It's like, don't take photos. Yeah, it's more like uh, her, not her priority, it's the government's priority, yes. right? And they've told the police officers to not allow people to film or take pictures. Yeah. Which you got to you gotta realize this is not out of the ordinary. Do you remember during the floods uh, when the people were trying to take videos about the cars floating away and the bridge collapse that happened in Beijing? Yeah. The immediate priority was not to send rescue vehicles. That happened later, right? Yeah. The first priority was to board up the bridge so yeah, that so people looky couldn't see. Yeah. couldn't see or take videos or pictures of the bridge collapse. Yeah, they actually put these big... We, we had it on the show, but they put these big plates of corrugated iron yes. up the, along the roads that were near that bridge so people couldn't see the actual yeah. collapsed bridge. Yeah. And this is part of the whole propaganda effort. You know, China is incredibly critical of Western nations. Yes. And in their newspapers and on their TV every day, they'll have hyper focus on, I don't know, America's drug problem or sure. homeless problem. Or, I mean, remember when that Florida building collapsed? Yeah. You still hear about it every day now. Yeah. It's just, they're hyper focused because that's the thing. When something bad happens in Western countries, it's not just swept under the rug. It's public knowledge and yeah. people hyper-focus on mm -hmm. it. They do go mm -hmm. out and film these things. You know, how many people have been to like Kensington Avenue to f film drug addicts yeah, and sure. put it out there, right? It's yeah. out there. Right. But China has the opposite. They realize that if nothing like that can get out, if mm -hmm. people aren't allowed to film these things, then mm -hmm. it just makes China look clean and nice and mm -hmm. there's nothing to see here. Ignorance is bliss, that kind of thing. Yes. So their priority is... And I've seen this so many times. The priority is to go after the people that actually make any of this news public. That's correct. You know? Yeah. So, the, I mean, the people have to... It's like a scare tactic. If the policewoman is there to tell the people you're not allowed to do this, hopefully it's like for them, it's they hopefully scare them enough to be like, you're going to get in trouble if you do this. Yeah. And then everyone will tell that person, hey, we're not supposed to do this. We're not supposed... It's like a... Like a snowball effect, yeah. right? And then yeah. everyone's like, okay, we're not supposed to take videos or photos. Of How many, um, like... Reality not allowed. Yeah. How many, like, bad things that have happened in China yeah. have never been seen, and have never seen the light of day because oh, of this? Oh, just like... Like most it's of it. outlandish. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, the, the very few things you get to see are a real... Uh, it's definitely not a treat usually it's yeah. more like a real rarity it's something that's so big that they couldn't like for instance yeah. go around and make sure nobody could film yeah it. like yeah. uh like the three gorges dam thing mm -hmm. that was so remember when it was showing signs of, of, of wear that? yeah that was just so international and, and satellites can pick up on that kind of sure. stuff like that's like big big time stuff mm. you can't really hide that mm. um so that's kind of that's the kind of stuff you can't do but you can create this kind of tattle society yeah with smaller events like this and prevent them from escaping to the public zeitgeist before they actually you know take off yeah by scaring everyone well remember in that village uh, there was a, a factory that was poisoning the land Mm -hmm. and causing cancer and all this stuff in the local mm -hmm. village. So the local villager guy exposed the factory, Yeah, and then he got arrested. Yeah. It's this that is, kind of thing. This person here, Nako SL, they say um, it's like the pissing in the Qingdao beer brewing vats. It's the photographer or the whistleblower that got arrested. Yeah. Now, although that's a rumor, like we haven't confirmed that, I'm if, pretty that sure was, it's true. if that was true, yeah. mm -hmm. that really just tracks with how things work, yeah. right? They'd rather go after the person that exposed the issue than the actual issue. Well, that's right. why they have that uh, spreading rumors and, and causing yeah. quarrels law. It's yeah. like if you post something on Weibo, like if someone does something, yes, like that banner man on the bridge puts right. his banner out, and if you film it and share it, you're going to get into trouble. Right. He's obviously already, you know, he's done. Yeah, he's done, but they, like you will get into trouble. Him? Yeah. They uh, obviously disappeared him, but like his family and like Chi Chi or wherever the hell it was, um, 
his kid and wife are like under house arrest for yeah. what he did. Yeah. And they, the secret police or whatever, plain coast police always block foreign journalists like BBC and all that kind of stuff yeah. from interviewing anyone there because they don't want to exacerbate that story. Correct. Right. So it's pretty, it's really just control the narrative first before you actually deal with any problems in society or infrastructure. Yeah. Or reality. And that's that's just not a way to base your country yeah. on. No, again, you know? it's it's all about controlling the image rather yeah. than the thing. And this has happened multiple times when we were out filming somewhere. We'd yes. be stopped from filming something because they're like, no, you can't film this. You're like, what right. are you even talking about? Right. Why can't we? You know? Right. It's not even something bad. Yes. You know, that type of thing. Anyway, yeah. uh, that's just to set a bit of a precedent. And it's got something to do with what's coming up soon. <laughs> Okay, so there's been a lack of planning. I like what you did here. This is this is a good segment. <laughs> name. Yeah, you know the People's Liberation Navy. Army Navy. Yeah. Right? Okay, it's, whatever. It's the plan. It's the plan. And just like the People's Liberation Army Air Force is the PLAF. PLAF. Yeah, exactly. It's always, some, always the catchiest of names. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Anyway, so there's been a lack of planning recently. Okay, and I'm going to talk about two incidents that have happened. Uh, the first one, of course is the Australian, this is real footage, by the way, of Australians, <laughs> divers, okay? Is so it's going to be the most obscure reference of all time? Maybe, who knows? But here's the thing. Um, there's this, let me, let me bring it up here. <clears throat> there's this Australian warship, okay? And it is called the HMAS Toowoomba. Okay. Toowoomba. Okay. Okay, so... Eight Her Majesty's Australian ship, Toowoomba. All right. So Toowoomba's mucking about in international waters, okay? As you do. All right. And then they get a net stuck in their propellers. Okay. As you do. So they're like, hey, you know what? Send a couple divers down there. Let's clear this net. Right? Yes. So these are the, the divers. Let's see this actual footage of what happened. Well, barramundi's a bloody big fish. And they struggled and something went wrong. Okay. So obviously that wasn't really them. Right. Just putting it out there. Yes. But yes. I, I, I understand. Think so? I understand. All right. So what happened was these divers are busy clearing this net. And then this Chinese warship. Now you can see where it happened. Take a look up there. Mm -hmm. Between Japan and China. But I must reiterate it happened in international waters. Okay. It wasn't in China's territorial waters. Okay. International waters. Got it. You know, that's the place where China's fishing fleets go to, you know... To fish everything out of the sea international right. waters around the whole world okay so everyone knows the law of the sea okay you can't claim that that doesn't belong to you any ships allowed free passage in international waters right so here's this two Wumba, minding its own business clearing nets out and uh the chinese ship ningbo mm -hmm. okay comes along so this uh very annoying ningbo used its great big hull mounted sonar okay okay we all know what sonar is, right? You send out a Sound ping. Waves. It's like, you know, what bats do or whatever. Yeah. And it bounces off and then you're like, oh, there's something in the water or something. Mm -hmm. But. Bats do that in the water. Well, they do it in the air. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. Yes. I know Echolocation. Saying. I know what you're saying. But sonar is for underwater. Now, mm. the thing is, they released a ping so great in magnitude that the king of the seas, Triton himself, felt it. All right? Okay. So um, I just want to read to you guys. If you get pinged by a sonar, if it's like a massive ping like what they did, sonars push out sound waves often incapable of being heard by humans. Uh, the waves can stimulate the vestibular system, the link between the inner ear and brain, causing nice. disorientation. Divers can suffer from dizziness, hearing damage, stomach pain from gas, or organ damage, depending Yikes. on the frequency and intensity of the sound. Yikes. Symptoms include numbness, blurred vision, lightheadedness, vib vibratory sensations in hands, arms, and legs, and tremors in upper extremities. Yikes. So they actually injured the divers, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I can Our imagine... Purpose. Well, yeah, they just sent this massive... I don't know why... What are you pinging? You know what? They probably saw divers in the water, and they're like, oh, maybe there's a submarine or something uh, under okay. there. Yeah. So they sent this massive ping. Makes sense. Anyway, I can only imagine that the divers uh, surfaced disorientated, shouted, shouting something like, they bloody shoved a great big sonar ping up our Toowoomba. I'm guessing that's what they said. And lots of crikeys and 
Okay. That type of this thing. is your added. Yes, yeah, so I'm just guessing. Yes, this is your added yeah. guesses. A lot as of crikeys. Yeah, a lot of crikeys being okay. said there. Um, of course, when China was called out, yes, they responded uh, by accusing the uh, the Australian ship of injuring their own divers. Wow. Because <laughs> I mean, well, why that that tracks? <laughs> I that mean, tracks, they're like, it? oh, our divers are in the water. Let's ping them with sonar. No, so uh, basically, we know that there's been a lot of. Uh, a lot of these little clashes yes. with the Chinese military in and around this area. And we can see on this little map, I'll just get us out of here. <clears throat> with the Spratly Islands, um, there have been recent repeated clashes between Filipino and Chinese ships. We know about that. We've covered it. Yes. They put up all those, like, they basically put lines in the waters, you know, yeah. to, like, demarcate. You cannot cross this. In Filipino's own, you know, um, waters. Their yes. territorial waters. There's an Australian here that said seems like a legit translation. So okay, yeah, good. Seems I'm like glad to that's hear. what was uh, what was said underwater. They're like, I need walkabout to get rid of this, like you know, ringing in my ears or yeah. whatever. Yeah, Pretty something sure. about bogans or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. They probably kangaroos. they probably use that. No, they wouldn't say kangaroos. Uh -oh. That's too. That's too. Bloody roos down here. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're no. no. They're no kangaroos in the sea, dude. Oh, okay. Come on. You gotta By the way, like, well. when you well, I, 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 and I, again, I don't want to turn this into a, mm -hmm. a piss taking match here, but mm -hmm. I, I did want to say your glaring omission with the bat thing is a great example. But you could have said dolphins. Yeah, I could underwater. have. Yes, dolphins use so. Bro <laughs> forgot dolphins. <laughs> no, I didn't forget about dolphins. You know, I just never forget about. Dolphins. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm just saying, like bats are more relatable. <laughs> Are they? Yeah, people know about him a lot. Batman? Come on, you don't get Dolphin Man. <laughs> you know, I want Dolphin Man. Yeah, Dolphin Man would be pretty cool, yeah. Man. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> sorry guys, we're a bit silly today, you know. Yes. Big, big night last night. Uh, the Diaoyu uh, Senkaku Islands, of course, the Chinese fighter jets released flares um, yeah. when it cut off a, a Canadian surveillance plane, you know, the Aurora. The French chef's kiss um, Aurora that we, we covered, the Canadian, of course, on the, show. the surveillance plane. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, the Chinese military, whether it be by air or by sea, are very good at behaving incredibly irresponsibly and trying to spark of a conflict. You know what I mean? Okay, Koala 1203 has a very interesting super chat. And he says, um, he or she says, is this HMAS Toowoomba is going to be the Australian version of the Aurora? How would mm. it fare against the Aurora? I don't think it would fare very well, to be honest. Oh, you don't think so? Why not? No. The Aurora has no weapons. The Aurora's got a cooler sounding name. It has 1950s screens in it. I bet you that Australian ship's pretty old if uh, we look it up. You're probably right. We'll take a ship, anyway. so usually old. Yeah, we'll look um, into it. Yeah, we'll look into it. Anyway, the fact of the matter is the, the People's Liberation Army Navy has been causing trouble once again. Um, and uh, sonaring poor divers in the sea. But now they have this other um, new ship that's just been released, and it was filmed off the coast of China engulfed in flames, or well, engulfed in smoke, I should say. Okay. So there's been a lot of uh, speculation as to what's going on here. Okay. The thing is that there doesn't seem to be any real proper official response from China. From what I've seen, there's a lot of response from China, but it's always these like military nerd nationalists and so on. Right, right, who, right, right. Who right. are insisting that it's a, it's simply a fire. First, they were saying it's a fire drill. Okay. All right. Which, All right. Let's get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. I know people are going to say Chinese fire drill. I get it. I mm -hmm. promise you it wasn't a bunch of people getting out of the ship and running around to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> right, yeah. But that knee-jerk response by saying a fire drill immediately had my skepticism meter yeah. pinging off the top. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now the thing is, there is a likely explanation. Yes. Um, it could be that they're testing some kind of smoke screen. It technology. could be. It could be. To me, I don't know about that. It, it kind of sure. looks like something didn't work out because this is their newest vessel. They've just put it out sure. there. It's kind of just being tested. Um, the thing is, I found, you know, this smoke screen technology is obviously very old. So, so to find modern examples of it on the internet is very hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, nearly yeah. headless Nick says, fire drills aren't meant to have actual Yeah, fire. exactly. Fire drills aren't supposed to have actual fires. <laughs> and congealed putrescence says, cigarette smoking competition. <laughs> yes, it could be. Because <laughs> sort of, yeah. every, pretty, oh, is it 70% of men in China, 50% of men in China smoke cigarettes yeah. or whatever? Mm -hmm. That's just said, that was the international smoking competition. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a third explanation here. Okay. Um, it's entirely possible that Beijing um, was saying, look, the skies are just a bit too blue today. 
Yeah. Let's go sort let's, that out. Let's bring this down to yeah. normal Come on, levels, we can't guys. set an, un, it, yeah. you know, we have to set a precedent for the rest of the country. You quit that. That's yeah, too blue. Yeah. It's too blue. We're not used to this. Sort it ah, out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here you can see yeah. the, the the new ship below. You can see the profiles match. It is that yeah, ship. No, it is that new ship. ship. But the thing is, again, the way China works, it's kind of difficult to figure out facts from fiction. Yeah, that's the issue, right? Yeah. Everybody that witnessed it was like, this thing is on fire. I think it's like one of those situations where if it was like a, a country that had a clean track record of just not making stuff up and yeah. not hiding everything until the last minute yeah, exactly. and being transparent, then you'd probably give them the benefit of the doubt and say, wow, I've never seen it done like that yeah. before, yeah. right? You'd have to talk to like a military expert. Maybe they'd say, wow, that's that's a unique way of doing a fire drill. Mm -hmm. That's a unique way of doing a smoke screen. Yeah. But historically, mm -hmm. it's just not been done like that, right? Yeah, I mean, there are... I've seen old clips of how they like, um, you know, create these massive black plumes of smoke, mm. which cover the entire ship. Mm -hmm. But it usually doesn't look like that. It actually does cover the entire ship. Right. Um, I've got some old stock footage from like the 19 footsec 20s or something over here. If you take a look. What does that mean? Footsec is just means like get out of here. So you say 19 footsec, it means like really old. Oh, okay. 19 get out of here. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're so getting weird. Yeah, you know, tired and whatnot. Anyway, the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I'm going into foreign languages, bro. Yeah, Let's it's, keep this yeah, English. sorry. So yeah, the the, the <laughs> source is uh, the Critical Past YouTube channel for this, oh, okay. by the way. Um, I couldn't. Tell. No, I, did, I know. I know. I couldn't but tell. I, I got to tell you. When, I couldn't even see a ship there. <laughs> when a YouTube channel feels the need to plaster their um, yes. their watermark all over the place, I think they kind of want to shout out. Yes. So, they, so you know, here you go. Okay. Critical past. Um, <laughs> here you can see a smoke screen drill in in operation. Oh, okay. Shoot. Um, that is not a smoke. No, screen No, that's not a smoke screen. But I just once again wanted to say that this. This to me looks like a fire, and to many people it does. There's there are what, two what ways to look at it. What do they what? say? Where oh. there's smoke, there's, there's fire, or something like yeah. that. But what's your source? That's oh the... yeah, what is the source? <laughs> I tell you, my here source we go. is that I made it the f up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Apologies, <laughs> guys. Sorry. So anyway, here's the thing. I'm gonna go fifty fifty on this. It could have been a fire because look, sure. they are testing their new ship. Okay. Yeah. It is. New technology for them. It is made in China, after all. They do suffer a lot of setbacks with their new stuff when they launch it. It does happen. Yeah. Okay. And it has happened a lot. It is possible that they tried to do a fire drill and there was a fire as a result. Yes. It's possible that they were trying to do a smoke screen uh, test and it did like set something else off. It could also just be a smoke screen exercise, but one that looks pretty badly pulled off. I, can I give in my, my two cents? Sure. Here? I also would go with the 50-50 route. And mm. that way you have absolutely no accountability on that. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no, but my reali my, in reality, I would say it's 50-50. We yeah. don't know, right? We can't know for sure. But hey, look, it's kind of pointing to they had a, a bit of a mishap. That, so that's what I wanted to yeah. get to is I think you'd have to analyze afterward what happened, right? You'd have to look at what they did. Did they try to scramble to cover up the ship? Did they try to hide it? Because like maybe there's yeah. going to be imagery that shows that there was fire damage to it. Right? Yeah, also, yeah, we're, we're going to keep a, an eye out because this happened just like three days ago. Maybe it's a mobile coal power plant, yes. as uh, Catastrophe said. Also, remember, if you look at any old, and again, I guess China's just kind of, you know, getting into this new technology of smoke screening, like, from the 20s or whatever now. Yeah. But if you look at the old footage in black and white, when they do have the black smoke, it mm. doesn't rise off the ship. Like It engulfs the entire ship. Right. Like it creates like a mess. It's, it's a smoke screen, right? So that that footage is from when, did you say? Because you said some foreign language. 19 foot sec. What does that mean? <laughs> like back in the past. But, in so the older days. Any, it could have older, been the 90s? It no. It could have been the no. 20s? Back before color. Olden days. Pre-color. Yes. Okay. I'm guessing 1930s, 40s, thereabouts. Okay. Anyway, like I'm just saying, it normally plumes it out. Now, the thing is, if I was an attacking aircraft or something and I saw this, this would just make it an easier target. It's like, hey, here I am. Look. Right. You know? Right. It's not really acting very well as a smoke screen. Sure. So that's, that's my counter to the idea that it's a smoke screen test. Because it doesn't look like a smoke screen. It looks like a smoke signal. Yeah. It's like, here yeah. I am. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's kind of more of a directed, like, plume Right, of coming yeah. directly off the ship as yeah. opposed to covering the ship. Yeah, it's supposed to. I understand what you you're You can see old footage if you want to look up smoke screens from ships. They used to have yeah. these amazing, they got amazing footage in black and white because it's such sure. old tech of planes dropping down like a curtain of yes. white smoke. 
Yeah. So that the other ships can't target their their fleet. It's really amazing. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. Okay. So it anyway, I think we'll leave it up to you guys to decide, but I'm going to lean more towards the idea that they screwed up. So it's not 5G smoke signals. <laughs> it could be, <laughs> you know. This could have all been AI. Yeah. You know, China's great Maybe AI. Something of this. Yeah. The giant budget that they've had for AI, maybe the sizzle, not even real. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know what's real anymore. Exactly. Anyway, um, let's, yes, uh, but, let's move on, shall we? Yes, but don't move on to the next segment. We do have a word from our actual oh. sponsor, not these stupid little ads YouTube keeps putting in. Oh, we've got a, a, a nice word from a sponsor. We do. We do That's have a nice, epic. delicious, beautiful, beautiful word. Okay. Can you pull up that word? I'm, I'm getting there. I appreciate you pulling up that word. All right, let's see. Really First, cool. Oh, this for you to this pull word? up this word. How about this one? No, that is later. That's just a preview of what our main segment's about. Yes, we're talking about this new outbreak in China. Yes. That's going to be soft power hour. Just to give you a preamble, these are school kids still studying, studying. with IV drips. I mean, props to the dedication. That is some serious dedication. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um,. You know what? Yeah, if you like this guy, this you've had guy, a hard day's work. This guy has had a hard day's work. He is standing out there in the sun, dressed up as a guy that had too much, I don't know, silver oxide. <laughs> is he like that guy who turned blue like a Smurf? Or you could be yeah. like me, chomping down a donut with actual fried chicken inside. That was so bad. That was absolutely disgusting. You could be either one of those things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you don't have to be either one of those things. No. Because instead, oh, you could do that with you as well. Sure. Instead of doing that, you could instead get Factor. Get Factor. And Factor is probably one of the best things that we have come across, and we're super happy to work with them. Mm -hmm. um, Factor is this amazing chef prepared meal service. Never frozen. Never frozen. Come straight to your door. This is like I filmed this. You know, like whenever you go to McDonald's or something and you see the billboard and they're like, show the succulent burger, but you yes. get this piece of crap. It's yes. like horrible thing. Yes. In fact, this this is real footage. This it, is not like doctored in any way. Absolutely. That's what it looks like. And it's ready just in two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy. You skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays as well, mm. in fact, because you can choose from 35 weekly flavor-packed fresh, never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, all delivered right to your door and ready to eat in two minutes. My favorite thing is that there's so much choice. Yeah. It would be one thing if you're like, oh, I got to eat the same thing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? But there's 35 things to choose from. Yeah. And there's so many different options. There's calorie smart ones if you're trying to cut your calories, but there's mm -hmm. no, you know, normal ones. Yeah. There's ones that are uh, lunches to go. There's salad toppers. There's grains. There's premium ingredients. These premium mm -hmm. ingredients like broccolini and leeks and truffle butter and asparagus. This isn't like you're like easy go-to to go meal here it's not like a microwave dinner no this is some top-notch stuff and we can put our name behind it because yep. it tasted absolutely delicious yes uh with factor you can rest assured as well that you're making a sustainable choice because they offset 100 percent of their delivery emissions and source 100 percent renewable electricity for their production sites and offices Mm. Uh, this November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without all the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Go to factormeals.com slash ADV50. That's five zero. Mm -hmm. And use the code ADV50 to get 50% off. That's code ADV50 at factormeals.com slash ADV50 to get 50% off. Thanks. Yeah, there's a link up on the screen. Yeah. Try it out. Hey, if you're like a bachelor all by yourself, this is mm. a godsend. I'm not yes, kidding. for sure. You know, like um, my wife was off for a week, uh -huh. you know, doing something. Yeah. And I had this, and it was so nice for me not to think about what I'm going to prepare. And it's healthy. Know? Yeah, it's healthy, and it's yeah. tasty, and there's a few, huge amount of choice. Because, you know, like when you're kind of ambling around, like, yes. what am I going to make for dinner? Ah, yeah. oh, what, what do I feel like? You're just like, oh, it's like shuffling a deck of cards. Yes. It's like, hmm, this sounds good, you know? Yes. <laughs> and it's really good. Can recommend. Can recommend. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, back to the show. Back to the show, guys. I guess it's time for us to hit soft power hour. It is. Okay. You guys are going to know that you're going to use that code ADV50. Yeah, yeah, you, you have you figured to. figured it out. Yeah, you figured that out, yeah. yeah. All right. So soft power hour is our main segment of the show. This is where we talk about how China is trying to change your mind. And I suppose in a way they are. Yeah, I guess. I guess with the lack of lack of transparency. transparency. So there's been an issue. Mm -hmm. There's been um, there's been a kind of 
big deal happening. It's, it's at least making its round in the news. Uh, that there's been a big kind of respiratory problem in Northern Massive China. outbreak, f- especially outbreak amongst children. And that's an issue because we know that China went under lockdown. Like it was called zero COVID, right? It's basically zero sure. COVID at all costs. And what they did yeah. was they locked people in their apartments. They uh, It was just brutal. Yeah, you know, if yeah, you've been watching codes. our show, yeah. You'll, so you, yeah. you've, you've been around the block if you watched the show. You had right? to be tested multiple times a day. Yes. It was all fraudulent and rubbish. It was nuts, Yeah, right? It was like a huge mess. And China was simultaneously trying to be the example of how the world should deal with COVID. But was actually the example of how you shouldn't. But how you shouldn't do Ruined it. Ruined their economy. Me, had people stuck in their apartments for 30 days starving sometimes sorry more. 60 days yeah. 90 days yeah we yeah. have a friend in shanghai who was stuck for like more than 90 days yeah. so uh mm. anyway long story short this whole sh- spiel this all this stuff that happened people were destroyed mm. right their people lost their jobs they lost their yeah. their way of life they they weren't able to return to a normal life because they kept this zero COVID policy. And then all of a sudden, they pulled the rug out from everyone. Yeah, and they're like, oh, it's over. They're like, it's done. It's all over. There's, not, there's nothing more. There's no such thing anymore. They, they, we got uh, pictures prior to this, um, or right after they did it, but they were painting over the COVID murals to yes. say, like, wear a mask and mm-hmm. don't eat rare species. It, it, was, and... it was really, it, it came to a head because... Yeah. People were starting to protest, and yeah. China, the government, cannot handle, handle any kind of protest. And when I mean, they, they did that white paper protest, yeah, it was nuts. And the the bridge guy, yeah. um, banner man, yeah. as soon as that started to happen, and people were actually starting to break out of their yeah. compounds too, there were these yeah. huge scuffles. Then the government was like, you know what? Like we better just stop this, otherwise it's going to go too far. Like we yes. push, we've pushed them too far. Yeah, yeah. So the problem was, is that. Because of all of this lockdown and all of this cutoff, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You had a situation where normal illnesses and seasonal illnesses like RSV or flu. What is RSV or, for those of us like who don't speak? Uh, it's a respiratory synactyl virus. Right? Okay. Um, sinusitial virus. Sinusitial virus. Sorry. Okay. Um, is that that pneumonia? No. Form of pneumonia? Not. Nope. Oh. That is a virus. That is, you're talking about mycoplasma pneumonia. That's, that's what a bacteria. I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. That's not related. You know, viruses and bacteria, they're, they're both small. They're, they are both small. They're both small. They both cause harm. One is much smaller than the other. Do you yes. know which? Virus. Yes. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. So you're on top of this. I know this stuff, dude. I know science. Come on. Small little things that make you feel bad. This is very true. You know? You're, you got this. Yeah, dude, seriously. You got this. It doesn't matter. Okay? What was the source of your inspiration, by the <laughs> oh, way? <laughs> the source? My source is that I made it the f*** up. Yeah. Anyway, my source yes. is the Beijing Children's Hospital. <laughs> okay. Um, they said that the current average of more, there was more than 7,000 daily patients, and it far exceeded the children's hospital's capacity. And this mm. is... This is a bit different because during the COVID thing, when people were just getting falling down the streets and everything was going wild, and people were like, "Look at China, this is crazy." Before they kind of like really put the lid clamps on, down, yeah, yeah the they were like, "Nope, that, can't talk about this anymore." Before they did that, mm-hmm. uh, people were looking at China like it's like it's chaos. And the, the thing is, w- children weren't really being affected, but in no. this case, we're looking at children being affected. Yes, uh, in in uh, what's it called? I should say in in. Uh, abnormal amounts yeah, compared, large numbers. To, compared yeah. to previously. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says uh, the largest pediatric hospital in nearby Tianjin, so that's right next to Beijing, Yeah, actually broke a record on Saturday. They had received more than 13,000 children at its outpatient and emergency departments. You think about the average emergency room, the average uh, hospital, right? Yeah. You imagine what 13,000 patients looks like, and you can yes. kind of put your finger on the pulse here i mean yeah. this is abnormal right it's, it is very abnormal and um, yeah people the the news is coming out all over the place it is yeah mm. so health officials in beijing and other major cities in northern china have said that typical seasonal illnesses including influenza and rsv like we talked about before mm-hmm. as well as uh that pneumonia you know that bacterial pneumonia yeah. mm-hmm. um it's called mycoplasma pneumonia, a bacterial infection that causes mild infection and, and commonly affects children. We're driving the causes. So this is what China is saying. Yes. Now that's all well and good, mm-hmm. and that's great that there there have been some there has been some reporting on this, right? That's that's fantastic. Yes, but it's very kind of like what would you call it? Not very um, good reporting. I'd say it's kind of delayed, slowed down, kind of like muted reporting. I think the problem, right, is 
you're like, holy shit, these re- these hospitals are getting records broken with the amount of children being admitted. And they're like, oh, it's just normal seasonal stuff. I think the they're pl- playing it down is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I think the problem is that <clears throat> a lot of um, other, other like outlets and stuff were very concerned that China's pulling a COVID again. Maybe yeah. they're not being transparent. I actually saw a, an article, I think it was on, I can't remember what it was on, what publication, but they said, China, please be transparent. Yeah. I mean, the World Health Organization asked Ch- China to be transparent about yes. it. Yes. And China's like, no. <clears throat> yes. As usual. You know, here's the thing. When COVID broke out, it was a similar story. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's a, you know, some kind of pneumonia. And then yes. like, it's not too bad. It's just it's just the same as a flu. Remember mm-hmm. that was a, mm-hmm. that was a thing for a while. Mm-hmm. And then when it got out of hand, then the story started to change. Yes. So of course, it's in very recent memory that all of us had to go through this whole COVID pandemic nonsense, yes. right? Yeah. So the fact that there's another big outbreak in China, but this time amongst children, makes people nervous. Yes. They want to know the truth. They want transparency. And China's the least transparent, you know, country really. I mean, I think we've proven that yeah. the first time when they said that uh what is it? They told the WHO that it's not human hu- to human trans. When they knew when they knew it's it like, was. Bro, are we doing yeah. this again? Yeah. So here's the here's the the situation. After speaking with Chinese health and hospital officials on Thursday, however, the WHO said that the data indicated an increase in outpatient consultations and hospital admissions of children due to micro- mycoplasma pneumonia in May and common seasonal illnesses like RSV, adenovirus, and influenza virus since October. So that's probably what that is. Mm-hmm. The quote uh, from the WHO is, some of these increases are earlier in the season than historically is expected or experienced, right? but not unexpected given the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions. So right. Remember what I said before? Mm-hmm. When you put... You know, an entire lockdown on a populace for years. Yeah. It is probably expected that you're going to have more serious outbreaks when yeah. the country opens back Well, up. we saw that here. Um, yes. You know, after the lockdown was lifted, mm-hmm. our, our kids going to school got sick a yeah, lot. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It took a while to kind of break through that. So, yes, yeah. I could I could agree. Yeah, fully. I think every country went through that <clears> kind <throat> of. Anyone that had a, a, even a slight lockdown. Yeah. They went through that kind of those teething problems because you had to go through that and be like, well, now I'm I'm getting exposed to all these uh, pathogens again. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, that's the thing though. China was the source of COVID, COVID, yeah. right? And so that's why people are nervous and want more transparency because this could be the source of something new again. Sure. Now here's the deal. Yeah. If we take their word for it, mm. the good news. Yes. This is the good news. All right. Chinese authorities have said that there is no detection of any unusual or novel pathogens, meaning <clears throat> new stuff that we don't know what it is. You remember the scary thing about COVID is no one knew what it was, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, or unusual clinical presentations. So the good news is, if we are to you believe know, them, if we are to believe them, but just looking at what we have here, it does look like it's different from COVID. Sure, it does look like it's probably seasonal stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's probably no cause for massive panic or alarm. Of course. You shouldn't panic until it's absolutely necessary. For sure. But it's just yeah. that it's, I think like people are, the reason it's making such big news and the reason we want to comment on it is that I think people are just so tired of, of the lack of transparency of China. And they're, they're worried because this isn't the first time this has happened, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to go through this again, sure. right? Yeah. So everyone's just calling for transparency. I hope hoping this gets nipped in the bud. Hopefully, it is just your normal kind of seasonal illnesses. Yes, right? and I, I hope that is the case too. Am I in my mm-hmm. not proof for that? I would probably believe it or not in this case side on, on the side of the Chinese authorities on this one simply because, and again, simply because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are rushing to seek medical attention. For things because they've been scared into submission for years now. True. Think about how many years the Chinese government told their people, you're going to die, we saved your life, you're not going to get what these stupid foreigners, foreigners in, yeah. in America got. They're all dying in They're America. They're all dying. Yeah. They, they did this fear propaganda mm-hmm. all over the place, like wild, right? Yeah, yeah. If you think the media coverage in the U.S. was bad, I mean, what China was showing their people was that the rest of the world was was done. Yeah, right? pretty much all dying, like an apocalypse. Yeah. Like an apocalypse. So if you think about that from a mental perspective, you'd probably be more apt to be like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. Or, oh, no, this is much worse than maybe it even actually is. Right. right? And that's just, I think that's a knee-jerk response that any anyone might go through. Yeah. So yeah, probably and, okay. okay. Let's hope that's the case. But remember that the Chinese government always lies to sure. like save their, you know, their image. 
Sure. And so even if they are picking up some mm. kind of novel outbreak, they would not tell people. They didn't do it mm. before. Why would they do it now? Mm. You know, mm -hmm. you can't expect a liar to suddenly become truthful. No, and I and I'm not asking anyone to do that, but yeah. I, I'm also you know there's just nothing pointing at this being something sure. outlandish yet. And that's that's where we'll probably leave this because I'm sure. kind of I'm kind of happy to agree with you on that that it's probably just that issue. Sure. But if you look at some of the imagery and the videos coming out of all the kids having to study with IV drips in their arms and stuff, oh, it's, it's not, not very nice. It's not nice, but again. Is it parents being like, oh my goodness. Oh no, not again. Yeah. <laughs> Who put that in yeah. there? That's not. That, that's got to be you. That's no good. Spaceballs, what a good movie. Um, yeah, seriously though, uh, the the whole IV drip thing though, you didn't put the footage from our medical thing, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I did you forgot not. that. Okay. I, I asked them to include footage because we've seen this a lot. Yeah. We, we have footage of it in the we hospitals do. in China. We do. But it's very common when people have the flu or even a cold, yeah. they go to the hospital. Yes. You basically get some kind of uh, antibiotics mixed with some, some saline solution or something, or some kind of traditional Chinese medicine mix in a bag, and you sit down for two hours with a drip. Yes. Now, for most people, when you see a drip, an IV drip, you think it's serious. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a good point. You know? Yeah. You do think, I mean, think about it. You, you always see in the movies, like, someone's yes. been shot or yeah. in a car accident or something. And I'm sure, you know, we've both been in situations where you're you're in the hospital for a serious reason. Yeah. And the nurse is, like, checking up your IV drip and all that, and you've got machines beeping in the background. So you think it's bad. I got way more IVs in China than I ever did in the U.S. Dude, yeah, exactly. Like minor, yeah, they put me on an IV when I broke my knee. Yeah. They, I went because I, I had a cold and, uh, you know, I was fine. Yeah. My girlfriend at the time was like, no, we got to go see the doctor. I'm like, sure. okay. You walk into the clinic, they mix a little baggie of antibiotics mixed with something else. And you have to sit in this hard wooden chair for two yes. hours. Yes. You know? So that's quite normal for China. So it's don't... that in, t in traditional Chinese yes, medicine, yes. like herbal remedies yeah. and stuff. So again, I think, I think this... It's just a weird devil's advocate situation. And don't get me wrong, mm. but I think the there is a bit of an overreaction from Western media on this front. Well, don't, do you blame them? No, <laughs> no. And that's why I said, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame them because yeah. of what happened previously. Yeah. But the imagery, it's very clever to use imagery of like all these kids in drips doing their homework and stuff because that's powerful. Like you said, that's a powerful image for Westerners. Yeah. But if you've been to China, you'll know that that's not powerful. Imagery. It's normal. That's it's how they treat it. Very, cold, yeah. very normal, yeah. and it's so normal that it's not even news. Yeah. Right. So I think it's it's a bit of manipulation, a bit of emotional manip manipulation yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so again, not to put a wet blanket on the whole thing. Of course, it's always good to stay vigilant <laughs> about this kind of stuff, but it doesn't show the same path that we said that we. Yeah, saw we're before. keeping an eye on it, and sure. uh, if we notice any. Uh, worrying trends or if we see that uh, cracks are starting to form in sure. the narrative it's, it's probably fine yeah we'll let you know yeah. you know we'll make a breaking episode or something sure. we'll we'll definitely let you you guys know it's probably fine it's it is probably fine yeah. you know what else is fine what's fine athletic greens something that actually keeps you super healthy yes i'm at the picture of health right now you can't see i mean i'm just dying over here I'll tell you what, that doesn't matter. Because that's my own fault. That's your own fault. That's my own fault because, for overdoing it last night. Because Thanksgiving. you're dipping into the booze. Yeah. And what you should have been dipping into is yeah. AG1. Yeah, if I'd mixed myself up a glass I, of AG1, yeah, I would have instead, actually... Not I would have No. <laughs> no. AG1 cocktail with like whiskey or something? No. No. But by itself, I would have been woken up refreshed and yes. bright and, you know, bushy-tailed, bright-eyed, whatever they say. You know, it's not easy to remember to eat healthy and take supplements all the time. I don't think anyone has time in their day to be like one of those old dudes that I, has those, like, calendar pill boxes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to remember to eat healthy, yeah. but whether you do it or not, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. a very different story. Let me rephrase this. <laughs> yes. I don't think everyone has the willpower to eat healthy. Sure. So what if I told you the easiest thing you can do for your body under a minute mm -hmm. to stay healthy is to drink AG1. Yeah, I believe you because I do it. Tastes good. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's full of 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food source ingredients that you need for the yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much everything you need for that day in that one drink. Yeah, it's that incredible. doesn't mean that they go to Whole Foods and buy, buy the ingredients. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> They're just talking about, you know, 
Whole Foods as a thing. What have we noticed after mm-hmm. we have been drinking AG1? We have noticed more energy. Yes. We've noticed mood support. We've noticed better gut health, better mm-hmm. digestion, the whole shebang. Everything. We've noticed everything. Um, it is so powerful that it's literally everything you need in, in one serving. And I, I think there's no other better way to say why this is good. Because if you can do something that good for yourself in that short amount of time, then why would you not do that? Absolutely. Right. You want to feel good, right? It's not mm-hmm. just about, I want to live long. You want to feel good, right? Sure. You want to feel better. And that's what we love about AG1. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply Mm. of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's an adventure. Yes. Definitely check it out. We wholeheartedly support uh, AG1 and Athletic Greens. They're a great company and they're a great product. Yep. Yeah. Thank Check you. them out. And thank you for sponsoring the video. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's continue on. It's time for Wuma Corner. Man, do we have a big one for you today. Mm. This is actually probably the main segment of the show, to be honest. At least I think it should um, be. It's yeah. one, of, one of them. <laughs> we can have multiple main segments. <clears throat> can, yeah. Wuma Corner. Uh, all the haters and the whatever. Okay. Now, guys, this is not uh, a YouTube on YouTube beef thing, but let me explain something to you. Weirdly out of the blue, a number of years ago, yeah. um, I don't know, maybe five, six years ago, something like that, mm-hmm. f- foreign YouTubers, first of all, I, I'm the first YouTuber to make videos out of mainland China, mm-hmm. okay? There was no one else before me. I took a huge risk to start doing it because I didn't know if I'd get arrested if I'd be, you know, taken to task for... Because you're not supposed to put YouTube videos I mean, on. YouTube yeah. is banned in sure. China for a reason, because they sure. don't want information getting in or out, okay? So I took a huge risk, and I started to make YouTube videos out of China. And I think because I did that, I emboldened a bunch of people who never would have done it, because mm-hmm. they would never have tried. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as you all know, my videos kind of went from uh, a happy look at my awesome life, narcissistic nonsense type thing, into something a bit more mature, I'd hope to say, where I Mm. could actually say, hey, you know, China's great, but there's this issue and that issue which affect, you know, people and affect my friends, affect me, you know, like this, you got to be wary of this, these scams, you know, if you're coming here on a holiday, be aware of these kind of scams, because I don't want you to have a a bad experience. I want China. Yeah, I wanted people to come to China and enjoy it, you know, and avoid the pitfalls. Mm. Because there are many. Yes. Anyway, so about five, six, seven years. I don't even know. I can't even re- remember now. But um, out of the blue, I started to get attacked mm. by new YouTubers, mm-hmm. most of whom I actually know. Because being yeah. the first YouTuber, I'd be part of those little creator groups. Sure. They'd reach out to me and ask me about equipment. They'd want to do collaborations. And I actually did collaborations with quite a few of these attackers. Yeah, you're active with that. Yeah. And, you know, I I would try to give them advice on how to grow their channels and how to do it and all this. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like it it happened overnight. I started to get attacked with these uh, Serpents at A exposed videos. And he's a liar and a racist and a, you know, because they were trying to curry favor with the Chinese government, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and to get the nationalists behind them. Sure. Um, And it was kind of a weird thing. Mm -hmm. And then not that long after these attacks started happening, you started to see these uh, propaganda fluff piece uh, travel sort of um, YouTubers in China, Mm -hmm. where a YouTuber who I'd known personally all of a sudden would go on a trip to Hainan or Mm. to wherever, and they're talking about how great the poverty alleviation Mm. is and talking about how great the high-speed rails are. Lining up a state media talking point. Yeah, they're like, oh, look at this amazing thing, project that the government did. And you're like, this is very unnatural, Mm. okay? So, you know, obviously it was very obvious what was happening is these people were being paid to do propaganda. Yes. In one form or the other, compensated. They were being flown out there, all their expenses taken care of. Yes. And they were told to just, hey, you know, film and uh, say positive things and they'd appear on the local press and all that sort of thing. So anyway, I've made quite a few videos about this phenomenon, uh, as have you, and we've talked about it in the past. But basically you get this group of foreign uh, CCP shills, as we call them, they are propagandists, and they are the type of people who put out videos on YouTube that praise China, praise everything that China does, praise the infrastructure, praise the projects from the government, praise the government, praise it's the culture. It's mostly government praise. Yeah, it's it's basically it's what the government it's whatever wants the government to talk wants. About, yeah. But at the same time, 
they talk a lot of smack about the West. They criticize the hell out of America and highlight all the problems, like the homeless issues or the drug issues or the mm. whatever it is. But they, they have these like, China's so safe and in America everyone's a drug addict, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But the thing is they cannot and may not say anything negative about China. So they can't criticize a thing. So it's yeah, well, all, it's not their job. Yeah, exactly. Which, by the way, that's why we're so lucky is that we're independent. So yes. I can criticize South Africa, where mm -hmm. I'm from, which if you saw my recent video, you could see uh, yep. I'm very critical of that place. Yep. Um, I could criticize the USA and mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, like the president's kind of old and should probably retire, you know, in an old age home or the other candidates. Uh, you always go weirdo. straight to the top. You can, you can criticize can, any element. That's what I'm saying. It. But yeah. the fact is... Because in China, you may not criticize Xi Jinping. No, but you can't criticize anything. Yes, but in America, I mean, you can that's, criticize every level. that's why I use the president yeah, as I, an I example, because that's the top. The top. <laughs> yes, yeah. started. So I can literally yes. criticize right. Biden right now right. and say that I think he looks like a frail old man. Okay. Right. And I'm not going to get the FBI coming to knock down my door no. and say, like, you're arrested and they cancel my account and all this kind of stuff. And, but in China, if I were to yeah. say Xi Jinping is like an ugly fat man. I'm done, mm. you know, especially if I've got a big audience. Mm. So it's impossible for them to say anything critical of the government, especially, mm. Mm -hmm. but anything. Mm -hmm. And so you will search through their content and you will never find a critical thing about China, but you will find massive attacks on uh, the West. And that's what makes them propagandists mm. is it's all about showing a one-sided picture of a place. Yeah. There's one thing that's very important about this. Yeah. And that, that is it's not... I want to make sure people understand. This is not like independent, people like Lilla Farley, for example. Yes. <clears throat> That's not the other side. I think a lot of people try to confuse this. They say there's the shills and then there's us and Lilla Farley and all the billion other, you know, yeah, critical, yeah. critical of the CCP YouTubers. Mm -hmm. There's not two opposing sides. No. There's independents yeah. who happen to believe that it's more just to champion human rights mm -hmm. and criticize powers that are making poor decisions against human beings. Yes. And then there's people that want to work for authoritarian states to curry favor with them to gain a lifestyle or a following or money, whatever their motivation yeah. is. They're two different things. Yes. Um, what happened was we saw this article on uh, Financial Times, and it was yes. called Friendly Foreign Influencers Win Growing Following in China. And it was interesting because it went through a bunch of these kind of sympathetic to the CCP type uh, influencers. Yeah. But unlike the other articles, we've seen some of the stuff on New York Times stuff and they've all done great work. But the this time it actually quoted this amazing uh, report here. Pause it there. Okay. And it's called Singing from the CCP's Song Sh Song Sheet. Yes. And it was from the uh, from ASPI ASPI, that's the Australian Strategic, Strategic Policy thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Institute. It, yeah. They put out an article and they went into like 92 pages of how they operate. And finally, we can kind of get a window on how they operate, right? And what they've kind of uncovered is some key points. Yes. And you just leave it on that. On this? Okay. Um, you got some key points to some hard facts to throw out? We do, yes. Okay, what do we now, got? I, uh, the link's in the description so you can actually read the whole thing. But <clears throat> yes. it says, foreign influencers are reaching increasingly larger and more international audiences. And some of them have tens of millions of followers in China and millions more on overseas platforms, particularly mm -hmm. on TikTok, YouTube, and X, formerly Twitter, right? Sure. So these are people that are spreading CCP's message, the Chinese yes. government's message on foreign platforms that are banned in China. That's why they hire them. Right. Yeah. But they're also on Chinese media. Yeah. The CCP, and this is this is something we, we've kind of learned here, and this is this was eye-opening for me. Mm -hmm. We've always struggled to see how they start. Like, yes, we've seen them go on a pipeline of like, I'm making videos, and now they find out if they do propaganda stuff, they get state gigs and travel gigs. They, and they, stuff. All, they all start by wanting to be a YouTuber, yeah. failing badly at it, because sure. it's a tough game. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame them. It's sure. hard. Realizing that they're just not getting anywhere with their YouTube channel. Then they suddenly do a uh, Attack Serpents at Lao 86 video yeah. and kind of fluff stuff. piece for the government. And right. they get a massive following from the nationalists and the government starts to sponsor them and take them around. Or, and that's that's mm -hmm. the traditional path. Yeah, the traditional path. that's when there path, wasn't yeah. that many. Yeah. Now, this is what happens. Okay. The CCP is creating competitions that offer significant prize money and other incentives as a part of expanding <clears throat> toolkit to co-opt influencers in the production of pro-CCP and party state-aligned content. So yeah. now you have these 
competition. Sure. Right. And the, the report goes through it and there's some pictures of that stuff. But yeah, you can scroll through. Okay. Um, there's these competitions and like make a video about Xinjiang. Yeah. Right. Which is where they're trying to cover up the genocide. Right. Yeah. Make a, uh, this one says, um, Shu Fang, uh, International yeah. Media's Deputy General Manager. Speaks at a launch ceremony for my, my uh, 2021's My China Story short video competition in Beijing. And what this is, is actually like a grooming the foreigner to talk about pro-CCP propaganda. Which they then use in propaganda. They did that. Yes. Remember, I got reached out yeah. from a South African university, yeah. Stellenbosch, and the guy was like, listen, the Chinese consulate has put on this competition you know, where we're supposed to talk about Xi Jinping and how he's such a great man. Mm. And whoever wins gets like whatever it was, 10,000 Rand or something. It's quite, mm. a, quite a lot of money as yeah. a cash prize. So they get all these entrants of, you know, foreigners saying how great Xi Jinping is. And then they take all those videos and they use them for domestic and international propaganda. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you can leave it up there. It's fine. Okay. Um, it says, Beijing is establishing multilingual influencer studios mm. to incubate both domestic and foreign influencers in order to reach younger media consumers globally. And they actually have this influencer studio system on page 33 of this report. But uh, it's important because we used to think of this more as a giant, like, coordinated effort from the top and it is yeah. but it's gotten so intricate and so spread out now that there are these independent looking studios that are incubating these future shills as we call them yeah right. kind of like the what was that you got to run mm -hmm. what was yes. that yes uh that was the uh um, media challengers media challengers right yes. they come up with these things that don't look like it has anything <laughs> yeah. to do with the chinese government mm. Do 10 minutes of Googling and you find out, of course it is. It's put right? on by the Chinese government. It's put yeah. on by the mm. Chinese government. So it's these competitions which turn into incubators. Yes. Right? Which kind of groom, like I said, groom these these shells, right? Yeah. And there wasn't really any spotlight on how this process happened until this report came out. Yeah. Uh, it says the CCP is effectively using a widespread network of international students at Chinese universities as well. Yeah. Cultivating them as a latent talent pool of young, multilingual, social media friendly influencers. And so this is another thing you get, which unfortunately right now, there's not a ton of international students compared to what there used to be. Yeah. Uh, but what China can do is that's a talent pool. If they can get, if they can flip someone, so to speak, even if they're, even if they don't hate the CCP, if they can flip them to do propaganda for them, you have a talent pool that's domestically available to you, yeah. right? Uh, Russian influencers in China are cultivated as a part of CCP's strategic goal of strength, strengthening bilateral relations with the Russia to counter Western countries. And actually, I guess, uh, according to this report, the biggest uh, CCP influencer, foreign CCP influencer, was a, is Russia. Yeah, it's like that falafel guy, whatever yeah, his name is. Like that. Fulafu, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's falafel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what it is. I think it's Fulafu uh, or something. He's yeah. that guy it's who's not got a, those it's not crazy a, eyes. You know, the crazy oh, yeah. eye guys. Like, yeah, yeah. That yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah. That guy. Why Zhongguo? You actually know that guy. Gets, he gets uh, <laughs> some criticism from the netizens because he's too overt yeah, about it. Yeah, he's just too... I mean, it's... No one runs around like... I love America. America's amazing. But he's the biggest. You know? Yeah, he, he yeah, does have the widest appeal. But like, it's funny because in this report I was reading, mm -hmm. it says the Communist Youth League, right? Yeah. So this is the official branch of, sure. of the CCP, one of them. They don't like the way he does stuff. They prefer the way some other guys do it because they're more subtle about it yeah, or yeah, more yeah, smarter yeah. about it. Exactly. You know? He's a bit too, you know. There's levels to this, He's guys. well killed. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, it says... Um, the CCP is using foreign influencers to enable its propaganda to surreptitiously penetrate mainstream overseas media, including major U.S. TV cable outlets. Uh, Chinese authorities use vlogger, influencer, and journalist identities interchangeably because you get to use someone. Oh, this is a vlogger. Now it's an expert. Now well, it's this. Well, take right? a look here. Here's Hua Qingying, who's like the foreign yeah. um, government official, like the foreign ministry spokesperson. And she's uh, saying how this vlogger, American vlogger, just flew to Shanghai from whatever a few days ago. And upon arrival, he documented and compared the two countries' different approaches to COVID-19 prevention from his own perspective. And of course, in the video, he praises China. Yeah, yeah. And he says how bad America is and how yeah. good China is at this. So the foreign, the, the foreign ministry uh, and all the, the government organs end up using these foreigners as, see, this is proof. Yeah. See, it's, it's massive propaganda for them. Yeah, and before, like I said, before mm. this report, you'd have like, yes, this lines up perfectly. Mm. 
yes, you have state media pumping this out, yeah. right? But now there's proof as to what awards are they given? Yeah. What money exchanged hands? Yeah. Right? In some cases. Sure. What incubator did they go through? Yeah. Did this report line up exactly with another report side by side? Yes. And it's this, it's the first time I've seen a report on this kind of huge juggernaut of a campaign. It's called Jiang Hao Zhongguo Gu Shi. It's like yes. tell the China story well. It's the first time I've seen a cohesive, coherent report that puts why and proves it yes. with citations. Instead of saying, this is awfully suspicious, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, here's a, a great example. Yeah. Remember I did that, uh, the genocide theme park, yeah. you know, with these guys who all went to Xinjiang. They present themselves as being, you know, just a vlogger, as you can yes. see up there, you see on the right. Yeah, what does like, it say? Ooh. British vlogger, you can read it better than me. It says, uh, Stuart Wigan appears to be an independent traveler in a video from Xinjiang posted on his YouTube channel, left, while party state media present him as a People's Daily online reporter in another video filmed on the same trip. You see how it yeah. says in that caption, it says Stuart Britain, uh, People's Daily online uh, reporter. reporter. So yeah. it's a reporter now. It's not a vlogger anymore. Yeah, right? well, but it's the same they, trip. they get to basically have their cake and eat it because yeah. what happens is... The YouTube side of things will see this, oh, I'm just a travel vlogger. Yeah. I'm here in Xinjiang sure. trying the nice food and watching some happy Uyghurs dance around. Okay? Right. And everyone's like, oh, that's interesting and cool, travel vlog. But at the exact same time, he was flown there. Yeah. He's being taken around by his minders. Yes. They're setting him up and they're uh, filming him for actual state media mm -hmm reporting and presentation. So he is just doing state media propaganda, but right. in two forms. And it, and it does, it can look organic if you yes. don't watch it on the state yeah, media Yeah, if people thing. don't see the state media, mm -hmm. which most people mm -hmm. won't, they'll think, oh, look, China's, there's no right. genocide. Can you go to the next slide? Because this mm -hmm. is these are all from the report, by the way. So you can read this. Yeah, it's a good measure, report, guys. Please read it if, um, you get, if you're interested. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. you go to the next one. This is just more jargon. Yeah. It's like seminar on how to tell China's story well. It's like with how videos, to use with short videos. videos to do the propaganda yes. campaign from the top mm -hmm. leadership, right? Just go to the next one. See, okay. this is like everyone talks about Xinjiang. This is a ceremony they had, and you can see influencers there. Yes, of and course. it's to it, that this was a, a seminar that was put on to talk about how how to use uh, tr basically travel propaganda. I don't think you've got anything else. Uh, oh crap! I'm sorry. You've you missed out okay, on so. Some what juicy I want ones. To, no, it's okay. Yeah. I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'll just read it to you. Okay. Please, so, please go ahead. And this is in the report, so okay. it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to go on forever. Okay. Uh, but CCP aligned influence. This is probably the most important feature. Yeah. CCP aligned influencer content has helped boost the prevalence of party approved narratives on YouTube. And what we call this is SEO, search engine optimization. Yes. And what it says here is outperforming more credible sources on issues such as Xinjiang due to search engine algorithms that prioritize fresh content and regular posting. Mm -hmm. And this is on page 15. It says, uh, turning a foreign threat into propaganda opportunity. What the CCP tried to do was to take a search term like Xinjiang, because everyone at the time was like, what are these genocide camps? Sure. Remember the famous drone shot of all yeah. these weaker prisoners, right? What is the story on this? And the quickest, most easy thing that they can do is pump out a ton of content to try to populate search results. And what this report did was broke down, uh, if you were in Australia and you search for Xinjiang, this was the top 10 results. If you're in America and you search for Xinjiang, this was the top 10 results. And in both of those cases, the majority of search results were state media or foreign influencers that were promoting state media yes. or their narratives on the Xinjiang genocide. Correct. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting a report from BBC, CNN, uh, somebody that, uh, for Arslan, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, Arslan Hedayat, which is a Uyghur activist. Yeah. Uh, people that are experts on the topic, instead of getting those as your top search results, you were getting state media or state media sympathetic Yeah, promoters. Chinese state media. That's all you'd find if you Googled it, yeah. Even... Mm -hmm. And this is the creepy thing. Even if that content had less views. Yeah. So something influence. that's got like a thousand views yeah. would rank like search term number mm -hmm. three, mm -hmm. whereas a video with a million views from a credible source wouldn't even turn up on the first page. Correct. Yeah. It's all search engine optimization that the Chinese government pays for and, and knows how to deal with as well. Yeah. So to wrap this up, it says foreign influence played a key part in the propaganda department's drive to control international narratives about COVID-19, mm -hmm. right, in China, and in some cases attempted to push the CCP's narrative over 
overseas as well. And they did some case studies. And this is something we've been seeing. We've seen a big uptick in China, not just trying to, con the vast majority of what China wants to do is control the narrative back home in China. Yeah. But we've seen a huge uptick in trying to influence foreign opinion in your country. Let's say you're not in China. Yeah. Right? Um, and they use these foreign influencers to do that. So yeah. they've seen, I'd say, a, a modicum of, of success. And I think, again, I think this is like one of the most coherent things I've seen put it together about how it happened and now how to be more informed about this. And maybe Correct. now when you go forward and you read through this, you know who's working for the CCP or who's getting promotion from them or whatever, yeah. through yeah. whatever. And then also at the same time, you'll be more armed with the knowledge to know, well, maybe this person that I'm starting to see pop up is doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Right. This is yeah. you're armed with that knowledge. Uh, it says efforts, and this is this is bad. Efforts to deal with the CCP propaganda have taken a step backwards on X, which is Twitter. Of course, yeah. Uh, which under Elon Musk is dispensed with state affiliation labels. Yeah. And allowing verification for state media uh, party state media workers, including foreigners. So yeah. nobody's labeled anymore. Yeah. As they were as working for a foreign state, and they could be verified by just paying it. Yeah. yeah, Twitter has unfortunately taken a huge step back when it comes to preventing Chinese propaganda, and yeah. it's now a very useful tool to promote Chinese propaganda. Yeah. So, hey, it is what it is, guys. Yeah. Anyway, this is a very fascinating report. We do suggest you read it. The link is in the description below. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, of course, a big part of our what we do as well, because these guys and uh, the the government constantly attacks us as well. Sure. But time to go on to a lighter note. Yeah, I was hoping you'd get to something funny. Yeah, we've got a, a show on Monday, and right. uh, we wanted to show you what you missed if you hadn't seen it, okay? The wall, man. Wall ride. Right. Look at that. Yeah. It sounded like Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of did, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Like, did, 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 did. <laughs> He's like... Whoa? <laughs> He's, like... <laughs> He's a real barrel of laughs. You'll see what I'm talking about here. This is Buddha. Fighting on behalf of the CCP. This is Kami Buddha's Yeah, call. it's Kami Buddha's. It's like she not, <laughs> not reverse yeah. card. <laughs> 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 Buddha reverse card. Yeah. Buru Baka Fry. Buru Baka Tanj this guy. Oh, wow. Oh, Zoro showed up. And then he like electrocutes them with. <laughs> what was that? I, and then they, I don't know what's with these. What is happening? <laughs> yeah. That was a very. Funny. Very funny episode. Of course, revolutionary fantasies always are. So we had uh, Revolutionary Fantasies episode three this past Monday. For those of you who are a bit confused, uh, Shaban Ho, <laughs> yeah. you know, Shaban Ho is our VIP show. Yes. And uh, you can join the show if you go to patreon.com forward slash ADB podcasts. Of course, only if you have the means. Yes. But we'd love to see you there. It's always a lot of fun. There's a lot of interaction. Um, it's we, a whole nother show every yeah. Monday, but it's way more fun. It's like less news. And we show things we normally don't yeah, show, yeah. we can't yeah. show, and we have a vote clips and things. Sure. And it's, anyway. it's a democratic show. Yeah. You guys vote on the topics. It's a very cool community. Definitely yeah. check it out. Go to patreon.com slash ADV podcasts. That's yeah. with an S. Thank you very much. Hope to see you there. Yeah. Anyway, time to carry on with the show. And I suppose it's time to move on to Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. And what do we have for us today in Worldview? So. Politicians, yay. Yay, but this is important. Okay. Um, Love politicians. I don't. I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, I know. I'm just <laughs> countering your sarcasm yeah. with reality. You know, there's one politician I do like. I really like. Hong, 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 Hong. Old uh, Willie Madisha. I absolutely would you, you know agree what he, with you. You know what he has to say? Hong, Hong, Hong. To hell with you. But sometimes, you know, he regrets pushing oh, okay. it a little too far. I withdraw that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I withdraw that. I honor Matisha. It's amazing. And South African Parliament is some of the funniest, most ridiculous crap you've ever seen in your life. I'll probably do a video about it at some point on my channel. Um, mm. So, yes. what I want to tell you mm. is that in Taiwan, I'm going to make it super simple. Please do. Right. The first thing you have to know is that... Is that it's awesome, and it's better than mainland China in many aspects. Yeah. If you've ever been there, you can see real Chinese culture, nice. and the food is nicer. Now, the scenery is amazing. You're absolutely correct. Now, bring it back to this. You know Foxconn? Yeah. What is it? Well, they produce... Pretty much, they make iPhones. Yeah. They're massive. It's, I've actually been to the Foxconn factory. Mm -hmm. 
um, and I did some training for some of the staff there many years ago. But that's the one you hear about where they've got suicide nets around it, you know, for people trying to jump off. I mean, that's yeah. a little bit exaggerated. Um, that did happen. Yeah. But it's a bit exaggerated. It's not like that's happening all the time. Kind of like the, uh, the all the kids were doing their homework at the IVs. Yeah, exactly. It's there. It's, it's there. real. It's real, but it's not like, oh, my goodness, everyone's jumping off the building. Yeah, not, not everyone. Um, they have been around forever. If you've got like an old motherboard or something and sure. you're like, look, there's a connector on there, it'll probably say Foxconn. Yeah. Uh, this Taiwanese company has been, it's Taiwanese, not Chinese. Yes. Be going on forever, but they obviously landed all these big contracts with Apple and they pretty much produce the iPhones. Yes. So, you know, you got an iPhone, it's been there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I really like Foxconn products. Fair enough. You know this guy who runs it, though? Mm. I don't like him at all. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Yeah. He was running for political leadership. This and is what you do. You freaking, you're a billionaire. You own a company, I suppose. I guess that's kind of what happens. Uh, you're bored, you, right? You're bored yeah, with yeah, life. You're, you're like, like, oh, ah, man, what am I going to do today? Oh, fly. I can't dive into my pool of coins. Yeah, it's like, oh, I think I'll just fly to Morocco. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, oh, but I did that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. My private jet. I'm getting sure. bored of that thing. What can I do? Sure. Let's do politics. Yes. Yay. Yes. I love a good politics. So what he mm-hmm. did was actually he pieced out. He's like, nah, I'm not running anymore. But we didn't even say what he was running for. You know, it's pretty crazy. Wait, wait, you got to back up a little bit. Political leadership, I yes, said. Yes, political. You said yes, political leadership, but with who? There's two factions. Yes. There's the good faction. Yes. What is the good faction? The good faction is, oh, I was going to play that with the video. Oh. I was just explaining that he's not in the race anymore. Now you can okay. play the, the part. Okay, I can play yeah. the part. Sorry. There was a, there was a good, um, what's it called? Don't mean to, to steal your political thunder here. No, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so can you pull, pull us out of there? It's okay. Okay. So what happened was in Taiwan, there was the, the there was two, the KMT, the Kuomintang. They're basically the party that is like kind of chill with, I'm going to make this super symbol, kind of chill with China. Like yeah. not super chill, but way more chill. Than yeah, they the kind of want to buddy, buddy up. They're like, like, yeah, let's keep status quo, keep everyone safe. Yeah, right? maybe we can kind of join up together later, you know? Sure. Whatever suits so, our fancy. Yeah. So what happened was they joined together with another opposition force, and that way they could bolster strength against the current ruling party, right? Now that dissolved. Dude drop billionaire dude Foxconn drops out. They're like, crap, we're back to the drawing board, right? Now, you know why he wanted to get involved in politics, I believe, is obviously Foxconn is based in mainland China. Yes. They're massive factories. All their business is there. He's mm. got he's basically connected to every CCP official mm. possibly known mm. to man. Okay? Yes. Okay. And he obviously thought that he could further his business interests in mainland China. Certainly you sounded know, like it. Yeah. yeah. By basically becoming the leader of Taiwan so that he could say to Beijing, hey listen, you know, I'm running Taiwan now and I'll tell them to be more friendly to you and we like, maybe we can like rejoin or something along uh, those lines. Uh, Just, you know, maybe give me a little bit more factory space or yes. send in some more slave labor or whatever it is you might be doing, right. you know? Right. So that's my personal opinion about why he was doing it. Sure. Also bored. Also bored. Anyway, yeah. they uh, they dissolve. It hurts their chances. And now what's happened is that you can just play this in the background. I'll, okay. I'll be done talking by the time it's over. Uh, get us out of there so people can read it. Oh, well, it's a fascinating read. Whoops. What's important. Yes. So what's important about this is the opposition party. The He's the TPP. Yes. Toilet paper party. Interesting. Anyway, the DPP, the <laughs> yes. Democratic Progressive Party, the current ruling party. That's the good one, by yeah. the way. Yeah. They favor stronger connection with the U.S. Mm-hmm. They're more in line with potential uh, independence. Right. The fact that they have their own identity. They don't want to be subjugated by mainland China. Mm-hmm. Remember, the KMT is the other side. They're like, nah, we want to keep status quo. Let's keep, let's stay safe. Mm-hmm. Let's not like, let's not push the, let's not push China too far, you know. And a lot of them are more in line with, uh, with China's values than any sort of Taiwan independence values. Yeah. But what this does, this dissolution of this alliance has put the America aligned party back in favor for the next election. Which is good. Uh, which is just... It's good for the the majority of Taiwanese people to vote for that. I mean, if it's the people have spoken, right? Or the people yeah. will speak. Well, you know the DPP, right? Yeah. This is our best choice. <laughs> Stop trying to influence this. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you're in Taiwan and you have a vote, you yeah. go DPP. Yes. All right, that's what you want. Yes. That's uh, you know, Tsai Ing-wen's party. Yes. Uh, William basically, Lai, um, mm-hmm. is the current candidate. Yes. She will not be running. So, yeah, of course not. But, you know, you all know how badass she is. 
She's and, awesome, yeah. Yeah, the, the cool. amazing strides that the DPB has made to really sort of bolster Taiwan's um, relationship with the rest of the world. Yes. So, yeah, the DPP is the good guys. The, the KMT slash TPP, whatever nonsense that they put together, is kind of the, the, the suckier one that's like, hey, we love Beijing. Yeah, I wouldn't say love. It's just like, let's get closer yeah. and not rock the boat. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you said that there's been a, a big upset because Foxconn yeah. boys, like, I'm not hanging with you dudes no more. There's no alliance now. So now yeah. it's just KMT versus DPP as it was. He was probably like, this sounded like fun. But now, like, you but keep putting sucked. paperwork like, on my desk. Sat down to do it. He's like, where's my champagne and caviar? Yeah. You're putting a freaking dossier over here for me to look at. I don't know how to read. Get this crap out of here. You know? I think <laughs> I think he just sat down and was like, this is just not for me. This is very boring. <laughs> this yeah. is not what I thought he it was He was like, Psh, I'm supposed to go to the sauna, but now i got to bloody go to this meeting and meet yeah. some, like, foreign... And they're like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, they're like, but why? You mean I have to work? <laughs> but why? I'm a billionaire. I do whatever yeah. I want, you know? Yeah, you get the, I- yeah. You get the idea. So is that our, is yeah, that that's, our world that's news? that's the idea. So I just wanted to catch you up on that. Okay. Because uh, it is relevant. It's relevant uh, what Taiwan chooses to do going forward. That's kind of the Oops. hot... It's the hot button issue, if I'm totally honest. Like, yes. we can't ignore the fact that China is either going to do something about Taiwan or they're not, right? And yeah. China, Taiwan's elections going forward are, are going to dictate a lot of that, right? Mm. So it's always relevant to, to the world. Because think about it. If you're in America or you're a, yeah, in the West in general, you're probably going to be involved in that some way. Yeah. Uh, just because of the agreement that the U.S. has with Taiwan, if something yeah. kicked off. Taiwan is the biggest issue when it comes to China's like relations with the rest of the world, really, mm. I'd say. Obviously, there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed mm-hmm. coming out of China, like, well, I don't know, pandemics, uh, destroying of the environment, raping the seas of mm. all their resources. You know, there's a lot of that stuff going mm. on. But when it comes to stuff that could really rock the boat, yeah. Taiwan is the little uh, hot button issue, as you for say. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So, guys, thank you for dealing with us today in yeah. our, you know, maybe slightly hungover show, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit. But we're not over. Done. We're not done with this yet. Mm. We're not over with it. No. We're not done with this we're yet. Not it's done. time for Yum Cha. This is our Q and A, where we answer your questions and you question our answers, and then we're going to answer your super chats. This stays up live now. Stays mm. up for the weekend. Mm-hmm. On Monday, we cut it out of the show. But of course, if you're part of the patron. You can always go back and watch all the full episodes, including the lengthy Q&As, which sometimes run just as long as the show. You are right. Mm. So what do we got today? Uh, It says, Anson Brooks says, given the horrors we see of terror. What did you say? What? Given the horrors. (laughs) Okay. Horrors. (laughs) Okay. Horrors. (laughs) Okay, I'm sorry. This is a serious comment, (laughs) by the way. I I know. I know. But it didn't sound like it. Yes. Okay. The horrors, the the horrors. I'll say it like you, horrors. Given the horrors. (laughs) The the horrors. That's what you said. The the horrors. Horrors. Yeah, really. Given the horrors. Yes. We see of terror (laughs) and warfare. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It's fair to say. (laughs) Okay, sorry. Yeah, keep going. Mm. Now, is it fair to say that Uyghurs are being genocided or has China been wrongly accused? I mean, you just go in our back catalog. <clears throat> Dude, and can, the, yeah. the Xinjiang thing is real. The fact yes. that they put so much time and effort into the propaganda to yes. try and counter this shows you that it's not. Yes. Uh, I mean, that it, that it is happening. Yeah. Um, it's just like any other big issue in the world. You know, yes. when you're talking about uh, things going on in Canada, there's accusations of certain things. You mm. don't see the, the Canadian government trying its absolute best to hire Chinese people to come there and say, look, there is no problem with the native, yeah. you know, Inuits or whatever here. Yes. And look at them. They are so happy dancing in their clothing and their food tastes good. Yeah. Look around me. Here so, I yeah, am. I mean, on stage. If they didn't knee jerk so bad with the response, it'd be a little easier to believe. Exactly. Their, uh, you just you just have to look at it logically, right? You know, like with common sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Qual 203 says, just in time for the Black Friday China show, mm. and you're back again with some mouse slap in action. Oh, yeah. We can give you a little bit of that. I'm happy to do that for you. You are your mom. Uh, happy belated Thanksgiving, to everyone. Yes. Anthony Sainz says, guys, as usual, a great show. Here's a little support. We need a what's how. You can get a what's how. I'll bring it up for you. Oh, what's how? Neo No One, thank you very much. Matt Peters, thank you. You're making my Friday better too. Jess Farida says, Best street food piss eggs. Oh, yeah, that, that's it's not the best. Well, yeah, street food. 
嗯，太舒服了。Le <laughs> Legion says, "Longtime watcher of your show,、mm -hmm. uh, have you heard about the city in Michigan that voted out its entire city government over a Chinese battery factory?" Yeah. And that was a success, right? Yeah, I believe. Because originally、so. everyone was telling me it was the end of the world, and they're totally not going to do that. And I guess they voted them out. We'll have to look into it. But、yeah. I think a lot of people are waking up because they've been. It's a weird situation. We've seen this across the country where people are kind of steamrolled without knowing it. Sure. Like some governors or some people connected to the local government will strike deals with these institutions from China and、yeah. start these big things without really. Letting people know what's going on,、mm -hmm. you know,、mm -hmm. for sure,、I、people are waking、that. up and、yeah. they're, they're being like, you know what, no, right? I would agree with that.、Mm -hmm. uh, user error says, just spreading some love for all that you guys do. Thank Me you. Me and a friend are going around to bike around Thailand next year. Can I please get a pig bay for sea milk? Thank you. Absolutely. Really appreciate. Team、it. Long Pig. Thailand is so much fun by、yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. Are you biking like a push bike, like pedal bike? That'd be cool too. I really. I <laughs> don't agree. I think that would be horrendous. <laughs> It is pretty dangerous. Because like you know you get a lot of those kind of dirt roads with mud and stuff. That's true. And if you're on a mountain bike, that's、maybe. true. But still, like no, on a real motorcycle though, it's amazing. It's so much fun. Yeah, that's true.、Uh, PB probably was talking about the the ship said Godzilla attack. Yeah. Uh, the raw fish king has retired sail sailor. Usually,、uh, there are divers over the side of the ship conducting the evolution. Will fly an international maritime semaphore flag designated for divers, the Alpha flag.、Uh, good, great work, gentlemen. Yes, well, the Australian ship, the what's it called, the Tumba Wumba or something? That one. Yeah. They warned the、uh, Chinese ship, the the Ningbo. They were like, "Listen, <clears throat> back off. We're busy. You know."、Mm. But yeah, they didn't pay attention. To, they just pinged them real hard. Ping one two seven to zero to zero to one is what China said they did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know what I、yes. mean.、Uh, <clears throat> Salticus says blue is an American color. Can't have that in Beijing.、Um, I guess there's something. The、blue. sky. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yes,、yeah, because it's so behind it.、Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Magneto Twister found out you guys through a buddy love the show. I was wondering if you can. End the show with something other than I hope I don't cut myself off this time. I feel like I'm on a Ferris wheel. Oh, yeah,、uh, I'll and,、uh, I'll give it a try. Are you actually though? Yeah, I'll try. I always do. I always try not to cut myself off, but somehow the system just hates me. Jeff Ramos says fire drills more like smoke signals training. I imagine <clears throat> every sailor training for 5G smoke transition with AI <laughs> built in. Eastwood says, "Great show as always." Hello、Thank、from、you. Alabama. Hope your Thanksgiving's went well. Thank you very much. You too. Mark Carl, smoke screen is to hide the ship from being targeted by a ship's cannons. Today's ships use missiles anyway. The Aurora won't even find it in this. Oh, would even find it in the smoke. <laughs> I mean, it's literally like, oh, there's the ship. Yes. You know, a little vodka. What languages do you guys speak? Can you speak Cantonese or local dialects or other languages? I can understand Cantonese. I can speak Chinese, and I can speak English.、Mm. You can speak. Afrikaans, Afrikaans, Chinese,、uh, Chinese, English. Mandarin,、yep. English, tiny little bit of Japanese. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Sorry.、Um, just thanks, Koala. Magneto Twister says, "Neighbor is an older Chinese man. Is it cultural for him to stare at me instead of saying hi and wave? Feels awkward. Girlfriend says normal. It's very normal. It's normal for them to stare. It's very awkward. Yes,、um, Dylan." You know, like sometimes you'd be doing something in China,、sure. like、uh, working on a bike or something at、sure. the shop, and people would just stand there with their arms behind their back, staring at you. Yes, it's so uncomfortable. Yes,、uh, Dylan, thank you very much, uh, Dylan. Uh, fa favorite car, regardless of price, I would probably say a, regardless of price, probably. I like Ferrari. I like some Ferraris. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I want. Like probably a Testarossa, to be honest. Those are really cool. Those are really cool. It's just such a cool car. <clears throat> That's a cool、probably、car. Testarossa. I'd probably go for a '71 Hemi Cuda. Nice.、Uh, years ago,、uh, this is from Andrew. I posted on Quora, TLDR. I a week ago I got an email, and the suggested topic was why is Xi Jinping not that bad? When did it get like this? Lol.、Well, actually, did a video on. You、that. did a、go、very good my, video on that. Still waiting for the response. Yeah, Cora reached out and said, "Oh, can you prove this?" And then you're like, "Yeah, here's links." And then they never got back to you. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> so why didn't you reach out to the Chinese people that already talked? Yeah, about exactly.、This? Yeah, they did the same thing I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.、Uh, Pleb says, "Burst." Yes, burst. Ming, Ming Treasure Fleet. The plan.、Uh, yeah. Yongle Shi. 
Uh, and also, do Chinese still remember those treasure voyages and based uh, eunuch Zheng He? Thanks for the show, fellas. Long pig in honor of she and sea milk. Why? Long pig. What's next? Mark Carl says, Winston, I wish you would stop criticizing the Aurora. I don't criticize it. I praise it. It's amazing. I think it's the other way around, my friend. Yeah, French chefs uh, disc kiss. golf said China should. And I love disc CRTs. Golf. What's that? China should disc golf. <laughs> okay. Okay. Noah L. Isn't disc golf lame? I don't know. I, I feel like it's kind of lame. I th- don't make people upset if they no. like it. No, of course. Yeah. I just I feel like it's a little bit lame. It's probably really fun. Yes, yeah. I'm. Uh, well, I guess I suck at frisbee. So do I. So that's probably why it's lame. Yeah. The reason I say it's lame is there was a park I used to go to, mm. you know, we, when we first got to America, mm. and I'd go there with my family. But it was also like they played disc golf there, mm. and they were like super inconsiderate. Oh, were they? Yeah. I don't think they're all like that. No, but it's like yeah, they're, they're throwing. Yeah, trying to just like walk in the park, and they're trying to hit you with a frisbee. <laughs> I gotcha. And they've got their like hard seltzer. seltzer. Oh, they're they're drinking and doing that. Yeah, so right. I just got a bad taste in my mouth. It's probably fun. That's though. not ultimate frisbee. What that? Yeah, isn't that where you like you play it like football or whatever? No, they throw it into that like chain. Oh, thing. yeah, that's disc <laughs> golf or whatever. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's probably uh, fine. Uh, probably fine. No, Elizondo, thank you very much. <laughs> Actnet, mm-hmm. uh, YouTube keeps showing ads on your live show, and we don't want that. I'm saying we don't want that. Yeah, we don't Sorry. want it. Sorry about that. Uh, is there any benefit from the 2010 South African World Cup from Sean O'Sullivan? Any benefit? I guess if people like sports, they'd be proud of it. You know? Yeah, sure. I was in South Africa, you know, in that 1995 Rugby World Cup, and it was such a big deal because mm-hmm. it was like South Africa just opened up after apartheid and it was this mm. massive, you know, it was this huge thing. Yes. And it's on TV. And it was just like everybody was going ape shit about this thing. Yeah. I didn't watch yeah. it. I didn't I was messing around on my computer. You didn't do it. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm like, nah. You know, I You're didn't like, care. Nah, I still like haven't that. seen it. Oh. Uh Sean Rice says, Today was weird. Lots of unpaid Wumao and no fans. No one seems to be arguing. Mm. Oh. Uh yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Uh Pleb says, is General Cao, the one that conquered Xinjiang? I believe so, yeah. No, he wouldn't. You know why? Why? Because he's chicken. <laughs> mm. uh, is there roughly, is that the, roughly the Chinese equivalent of Colonel Sanders, like the <laughs> world famous Stalin, Borsch, and Adolf Kugel? <laughs> okay. Just wondering. I don't know where you go with that, <laughs> Pleb. Uh, yeah. Why well, need clan man me? He wants a clan man. Okay, you could get a how sure. How sure? How how sure? Gordon Freeman says, happy start to the holidays. The boat smoke may be a clever ruse to make it appear they've already blown up your so that your enemy doesn't waste munitions. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> the she yeah. possum pattern. Yeah. Or perhaps the manure maneuver. <laughs> I like it. That's this actually is, very forward thinking. This is really good. Mm. Um, Pas- Pasamio says, late to the show, I grew up in Toowoomba. Oh. It's our Aboriginal for swamp. Never expected to hear Wait, it on what? the China show. So the, bo- the boat is called Swamp. Yes. It says he the said HM, HMAS swamp. Apparently, mm. he said never expected to hear it on the China show. Thanks, plan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I mean, like the, I like the question. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, boy. what what ship do you serve up on the swamp? Swamp, swamp thing, swamp <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. do, 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 you are amazing. Yeah, you are. You fight amazing. everything. <laughs> One of the worst cartoons ever, and I used to Mm. love it. Uh, Plub says, reload, Dr. Freeman. I guess he's talking to uh, Gordon Freeman. Yep, Half-Life. Great game. Uh, Robert, thank you very much. China Lake says, do you think it's possible for a U.S. citizen to criticize China so harshly that it causes problems diplomatically? Like, imagine a celebrity denouncing Xi. I don't... I don't think so. Uh, I mean, they'd get, they'd probably lose some, some of their international like sponsorships. Oh, stuff. dude, it absolutely does. Do you understand that's it. changing though? That is yeah. changing dramatically. I mean, I, I remember being in China and Sharon Stone said something bad about that's, Tibet when they like then. boycotted her. They, that's then. All, and whatever like movie yeah. studios she was 
you know, attached sure. to got banned and kicked out of China. Remember That's, the Houston Rockets? Let me read his question again. Yeah. That it causes problems diplomatically. Movie studios are not diplomatic endeavors. Dude, of course it's not co- diplomatic. Dude, they do they do tit for tat stuff with visas. They do all sorts of, of diplomatic co- stuff. Of course, you're always. right. But this is changing. I'm not saying mm. China is getting better. I'm saying that people are caring less about the repercussions. Right. Yeah. You, and you've seen that public perception has changed a lot. Yeah, you not 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 everyone's like, oh, we better be careful. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it's that's changing. Yeah, uh, muddy lover, thank you very much, uh, Gordon Freeman. Thank you very much, Free Northern Taiwan yeah. Bird Soup. Hey you, <laughs> uh, Biden Biden Gaming. I don't know who that is. Okay. Uh, tentacle Bucket. Keep up the good work. Thank I you. I think you're doing great. Doc Sullivan says, old Doc back again. Hoping everyone had a great holiday. Mm-hmm. Good show tonight, even though you guys are still recovering from a fully turned Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Biden Gaming. I don't, I I'm do not I'm not, not so. a fan, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> ah. mm-hmm. Anyway. Oh, sorry, it did a snap. Okay. Um. I don't know what that means, Emperor Nero. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Keo Williams, I'm so nervous about that. I'm not reading that. It's very derogatory. Oh, really? Um, not derogatory. It's very um, vulgar. naughty. Vulgar. Oh. vulgar. 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 Is it has anything to do with... Uh... Yeah, yeah, but it's just Dr. the context Ball, of it. It's kind of gross. Okay, all right. It was, too, it, was too, it was too visceral. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's, I wonder if they'll send him to check out this pneumonia thing exactly. at his own lab. I don't think so. Yeah. Dio says, it was only your recent videos that started showing up on my feed, and I started binging your videos. Good to watch cool. videos that are informative and entertaining. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much. Straight down the line. Just how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and we like to keep it entertained because there's so much crap about, like, everything's over. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's gonna, over. It's going to have some jokes. Isn't that like your uh, recent videos? Like, the economy's done. Didn't you do one recently? Um... I didn't say the economy's done, but the economy is showing signs of failing. And yeah. I do go into it. I don't say, no, look at these of graphs. Course. Did, did it say like it's over in your look thumbnail? Look at these though? COVID graphs. Did it? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> you have to. Really, I know, you, I know. You do it's it. Still... And then mm-hmm. thankfully, you know, it's different than the, like the actual clickbait videos is you learn something yes, when you come exactly. out of it with sources that mm-hmm. aren't just sources. Like... <laughs> yeah, you mean like <laughs> my sources that I made it the f*** up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know um, what I mean? Yeah. Yes. It's not like, oh, I'm on the ground. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, everything I say has nothing to back up, but I'm on he, I'm on the ground. So that means whatever anyone else says is not right. Isn't that weird how yeah. that's used all the time by uh, China shills? It is. But when they criticize America, none of them are on the ground, so they can't they can't say anything, can you're, they? You're right. You can't. Um, mm. Jack Britton says, never caught you guys, not caught you guys ages, oh. live in ages. Oh, cool. Uh, keep it the good work, chaps. Thank and you so for joining us. would you rather us. live in South Africa or China right now? neither okay perfect good yeah, answer honestly neither if if i had like forced gun to my head um i know that if i went to china i'm pretty sure that i'd uh, get uh, arrested yes because of what i do on youtube if i went to south africa the south african police would arrest me on behalf of china and send me to china because mm. they are so intertwined mm-hmm. you know the south african government is so intertwined with china that mm-hmm. they would do it as a favor mm-hmm. So I'd rather just not go to either. Yeah, good. You mm. don't have to go any further than that. Yeah. But I know you want to talk for 20 more minutes about you know, it. You know how it goes. Dragonella says, a, a tiny Friday coin. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then she said, bats are better than dolphins. Yes, in some ways, dude. I think dolphins are way better. I mean, than dolphins bats. are intelligent and, yeah, they, and whatever. They look appealing. <laughs> you know? Sure. But can they fly? I don't no, freaking think so. I, I, I'm Dolphin Man. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, do, 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 do. I like Dolphin like, Man. I think Dolphin Man should be. Yeah, they thing. get like ee ee or whatever. You know, there's yes. Dolphin Man. Yeah. Yes. Don't you think uh, that Batman sounds ridiculous? Batman? You know, like the recent inca- incarnations of Batman, where he speaks uh, to that stupid put on like low voice. I'm Batman. I th- always thought that was a mistake or something. <laughs> yeah. Like when I saw it in previews, I was like, there's something, there's something wrong with the audio. Yeah. No, but that's but what, that's what he thing. does. That's a real thing. I'm drinking some water. Yeah. It's nuts. Mm. Uh, and then Ted Park says, finally caught it live. Uh, thanks for doing what you do. Yeah, it's thank a pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Is that it? If it's relevant. And uh, we'll catch you yeah. again soon. If you did uh, go ahead and celebrate Thanksgiving, I thought it was amazing. Before we end the show, though... Let's I, before we before we end the show we have to say Dolphin Lundgren. <laughs> <laughs> Dolphin Lundgren. Yeah, why not? Yes. Um 
Yeah, I wanted to end the show by uh, saying, you know, the whole point of Thanksgiving is yeah. to say what you're thankful for. Yeah, we're thankful for you guys. 100% thankful for you as an audience. Mm -hmm. We would not be able to do what we do without your support. You guys are amazing. We look forward to the show every week yeah. and everything else we do, um, but specifically to interact with all of you. And yeah. um, that's why no matter what, come hell or high water, we will always try to ensure we have a show. Yes. Even if we're Even horribly if we're hungover. Fans. Yeah. And Trypto not a fan. Trypto not a fan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But honestly, it's been fun. Hope you learned something. Yeah. And uh, Good thank, sword, guys. thank you. Thank you for being a part of this very important conversation. Yes. We'll see you next time. Yes. Have a fantastic weekend. Dolphin and uh, stay awesome. Yeah. And I'm uh, not going to cut myself off this time. How about that? Okay. Okay. Five, four, three.